Dooley, so much to talk about. Uh, you're in Auckland. The rain has finally stopped, mate. It looks as though we've got a fine forecast tomorrow. So let's establish that first because the rain's been chasing you around the country. Yeah, it's been awful, Marty. Um, it's, it's been a real shame, actually. Look, it's not a series that I think um, many people were really anticipating to be a great series and, and you know, sell out crowds and things. But uh, it's still India in our country. It's still a money-making tour from a New Zealand cricket point of view. And I'll be disappointed with what's happened so far with uh, with the weather. So let's hope tomorrow is sorted and we get a full one day in. You know, mate, I, did, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just making this up, but it always used to be if you wanted it to rain in Napier, if you if, if you if you wanted to actually kill the drought, you just shed, scheduled a game of cricket at McLean Park. It just happens so bloody often, doesn't it? That was it. We were called the drought breakers, and that's, um, that's exactly what happened. It was just crazy. I mean, we played – Yeah, oh, look, I hate to say it. We went up to Cape Kidnappers in the morning at uh, 8.30, and it was absolutely stunning. It, there was not a cloud in the sky – the whole morning and the early part of the afternoon until we'd finished golf. And then by the time we got back to the hotel and sort of were ready to go to the ground, it was absolutely hammering it down. I just I could not believe the change in weather patterns from the morning to the afternoon into the evening. Yeah, and look, and this this was just a follow-on from the Friday in Wellington where we were messaging each other, and I said, it's coming, mate, it's coming. You were going, you don't know what you're I talking know. about. You were there in the stand. <laughs> and then it started raining again. It never stopped, mate. No, well, at least it, what what the rain did do was it was able to sort of wash a bit of the dust off the seats, which yes, was yes. quite a good thing at, at, at the stadium. So that was nice. Yeah, well, you did you know post a pic on Twitter <laughs> about that and got quite a response, Simon. I know it's tongue in cheek and everything. Oh God, I look, I tell you what, I just find the Twitter warrior just tiresome these days. Can't have oh, a sense it. of humour. You you, you do, don't you? Yeah, you do. Look, you've just got to keep. You just got to keep going at them because they they don't understand any humor there is no sense of humor on twitter whatsoever uh and and it just everything is so personal mm. everything is so personal nobody can actually have a laugh no, about anything anymore no, they can't. it's just you know anyway no. we're, we're, we're over that now all right let's talk about guppy to start <laughs> with mate 198 one days for the country his white ball stats are just out there uh he's cut loose from new zealand cricket and we were talking about this last week weren't we that there are there are plenty of places that he can go throw his name in the hat and actually get some get some cricket contracts in for the next couple of years and earn some coin on the circuit yeah there is look he um i, I don't know whether a couple of the ones at the start of next year are coming too early for him whether a uh, a Big Bash or a South African T20 or the IL T20 in Dubai. Whether they just come up a little bit quickly, I know a lot of those teams have got their rosters full, but um, that will, you know, they're only an injury away from, from picking a Martin Guptill. And if one batter, one international batter gets injured, he'd be the first name on the list, I would imagine, to uh, to replace them. So he's got opportunities now. Um, you know, the, the word is he still wants to play for New Zealand. That's from him, and I don't blame the fact that he still wants to play for New Zealand. I completely understand that he still does. But um, will he? That will be the issue surrounding, you know, moving forward, I guess. Um, you know, will he actually play? Will they select him? I, I guess that's the that's going to be the problem. But fully deserves to go away and, and make what he can. He's been an, an incredible servant. For, for New Zealand cricket. So, you know, just in terms of his reputation overseas, I mean, you know, you 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 you're, you're at, you're commentating, you know, these these uh, events, and you know who's there, you know who the you know the, the the team captains, the managers are. What kind of rep does he have? Yeah, look, a very good reputation. I mean, the only problem or the only place he probably has been um, a little bit under the radar or hasn't performed, they would say, is the IPL. What did he play in the? I'm just trying to look now. Thirteen IPL games. Average 22, strike rate of 137. Well, there's plenty of batters that have been worse than that, to be fair. And, and some of them have got massive money. I just think at times the wrong team has picked him up in the IPL. He needs, he just needs a good surface. If he'd have played at um, a consistent run, opening the batting at somewhere like Mumbai, I think he'd have done well. Opening the batting at somewhere like Kolkata, I think he'd have done very well there too. Um, you know, it's not that he plays spin poorly. It's just he doesn't start so well if it's a slowish pitch. And, 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 you know, he's not the lone ranger. Okay. I can tell you that much. There's plenty of players have been picked up for big money and gone to India and struggled um, on slowish pitches. So that's um, a, around that or outside of that, I think every other league in the world would have him in a heartbeat and, and pay very, very good money for him. So I, I think there is an enormous amount of respect and they know how good a player he is. Simon Dool with us on the platform. 98 test wickets for New Zealand. And I say that because Guppy stopped at 198. You look, it's, it's like this business behind the microphone. It never ends on your terms or when you want it to end. It's very rare that anyone actually gets to walk away when they want to walk away. 
what is that frustration like? Because when when it happened to you, I mean, the rest of us were sitting there thinking, God, this guy can still bowl for New Zealand. I know you had your knee you know, injury and so forth, but you could still bowl for New Zealand. Like, Guppy could still be batting. How how hard is that to walk away, and what kind of feelings do you have? Yeah, look, he'll be disappointed, I think, um, in the fact that he still feels there's something you can offer, and you still feel you've got a place. And, um, look, I mean, I, I probably looked back and thought, you know, I, I got smacked on the on the leg by Brett Lee and Wellington the test match before I got dropped and I could hardly bowl. I was ho- sort of hobbling into the crease. Um, I just didn't say anything. Uh, and then they dropped me for the next test match, which was at home in, in Hamilton on a fairly green wicket. We had we had Aussie five down from not many and, and, um, and couldn't finish them off. And, you know, I felt I should have played that game and then maybe if they wanted to get rid of me, that was fine after that. So Guppy will feel like he, he probably needed an opportunity at the World Cup, he probably deserved an opportunity at the World Cup or even prior to that. And, um, you know, if it is to be his last ever game, if, he, if he's never to play for New Zealand again, he can look back and say he's had an incredible career. Um, but it just, like you say, it, sometimes it just doesn't end on your terms and you have to be prepared to accept that um, and and move on to, uh, to to bigger and better things at, at you know, in your life. Well, I mean, it has for you. I mean, you've made you know a fabulous career for yourself out of the commentary and that, which is probably something that you know didn't it didn't occur to you straight away. I mean, look, I you know I I remember you at the fledgling stage. You got put on TV three with some dick from the radio called Devlin or something. I mean, that was my <laughs> <laughs> see that was the first star with it. You know, it's you know mentally is it is it a, is it something that you've got to work through or once he gets a bat in his hand and he's playing somewhere else it'll just go oh okay well that was then and this is now is that how it works yeah a little bit um i sort of got away from it completely um and and so when i i went back and i played a little bit for northern districts and you were batting um, you were batting well at those days you swinging the batting. yeah you did yeah, yeah. Mm. I opened the batting and the one day stuff which um, which was good fun and i kind of i think that probably helped me just get over the fact that that, that was the end of my career. I, I knew that was, but when I when I finished, when I decided to not play, I got away from cricket completely. Obviously, went to the rock radio station and um and didn't do have anything to do with cricket at all until about two thousand three, four, five. Um, so it was quite a long time before I could before I felt I couldn't play anymore. So I'm okay to talk about it. Right. And so so you know Martin's going to go through that patch where he still thinks he can play now and and he and he still can play. And he's still good enough for the next probably year and a half, two years to, to play some of these tournaments around the world. And then he just figures out where he goes and, and, and what he does post that. Um, you know, look, the, the media side of things for me was a, was a great one. I, I never, ever turned an interview down, Marty, no matter what. I know, I know, or one, I know you did. Or, 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 what, or what happened. And I think that was a good thing about it. You, you know, you have your bad days. You know, I mean, I can count on two hands. The, the really, really good days I had in my cricket career. The, you know, the rest of the days were, were pretty tough really tough but you never turn an interview down and i think that helped me later down the track progress into that that media side of things but not everyone can do that no and, no and um you know it's it's not easy for for everyone to sort of progress down that track Finn Allen, let's talk about this guy he was such a rocket launcher against australia what's gone wrong since i mean flem was saying the other day that he just needs to calm the farm a little bit he's got to realize that even in a t20 you don't have to take the leather off every single ball because we saw you know in that semi-final that you know the way that he got out was just silly wasn't it i mean give yourself some time if they're swinging it into your pads get your legs out of the way is that just an experience a, a little bit of both um i think he's a very one-dimensional player I've, I've sort of said this for the last year and a half two years i thought when he got picked up in the ipl i thought the same thing he um i, I don't think he has uh the, the real skill um at the top of the order to be a complete opening batter i think he is very very hit and miss i if we continue to play him i think he'd be a one in ten kind of guy can we afford to play that kind no. of guy? i don't know no. I, I i don't think we can but um, and you look back and you know that he scored that big hundred, but it was it was against Scotland, and with all due respect, that's kind of where it's at. That's where he's at, and he was fortunate to get um, you know that that forty and and did it really well against Australia. I thought that was exactly what New Zealand needed against Australia at the time. But post that, he was really disappointing in the World Cup. He was disappointing again uh, the other night. Uh, the similar similarity of dismissals when you think about the. Shaheen Shah Freedy, um, left arm swing. You think about the other night with Ashdeep Singh. Um, I, I, he's certainly not the, the finished product. Uh, and, you know, I think he probably needs more time at the domestic level rather than... Uh, he could be one of those players that in a year's time we're saying, oh, whatever happened to Finn Allen? 
Well, let's hope not. You know, they could, they, well, they could, they could ruin him in international cricket because he just, he might just go so poorly that in the next year or so, um, the confidence is gone, the ability's not there, and and the coaching is not um, sort of helping him. And you know, we we find he just fall, sort of falls away. Simon Dawd is with us on the platform, joins us every Thursday, and we so appreciate your time. Look, I mean, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist when it comes to Kane Williamson, and. But, you know, Dooley, I just wish that there were some journalists out there who would ask these questions because when you don't have information, that's when you start to speculate. When he takes a, a match off because, I quote, he's got a prearranged medical appointment, it just is such a bizarre reason. I mean, wouldn't you rearrange the prearrange? And if it's something really serious, I mean, obviously there's concern there. If it's something to do with his family, you think, oh, okay, you know, that's a, you know, any, 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 you know, something like that is obviously a damn good reason to miss a match. But it just seems so peculiar. He misses so many matches these days when he's not injured. He got rested in the West Indies for just in case he got injured. It just seems to be happening way too regularly. I mean, am I making too much of this? What do you know? I, I, I don't know anything. But what I do know is, um, or what I, what I do think, actually, I don't know. What, I mean, what a load of bollocks, honestly. Please, don't. I mean, if, if Kane Williamson is missing the third T20 international because of a pre-arranged medical appointment, I have no problem with that. But tell us that before the t- before the games start, before the bloody tournament starts. Just say, yeah. look, we've, this is where it's at. They sent out a list. I've, I've still got it. You would have it. You're on the media. You're on the media thing. And it's got a little asterisk by James Neesham's name. All right, because James Neesham is missing the third ODI. And this is going back four, three weeks ago when they named these squads. So it says James Neesham missing. Matt Henry, uh, sorry, Henry Nichols coming into the squad for the third ODI because James Neesham is missing. If they knew that Kane had a pre-arranged uh, medical appointment, then just say yeah. he's not going to play the third T20. That's fine. So that this just this is typical New Zealand cricket bollocks. And they do it time and time again. Just tell us. Yeah, look, that's, that's what or, the frustration thing is with me. Because stop lying to us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and look, and you know, and but no one's prepared to ask these questions. And, you know, and, and I'm sitting there so frustrated watching these press conferences and these lame-ass journalists who just refuse to dig deep into this. There's something going on, mate. It's happening too often and too regularly. And if it's not yeah, something look, going if, on, if, well, then just if, come out and say, there's nothing going on, this yeah. is what he's doing. And if it's a family thing, I mean, that, that's totally fine. I, yeah. I, I don't have an issue with it. And, and I hope everything's okay with, with the wife and with the kids and, and with Kane. I, look, I, I hope everything is okay. But don't stop hiding behind things or or just making stuff up that you think... And who are these people that believe it? These, these idiots that sit there and write write things down. You know, these journalists without they, asking they a question. Believe it? Yeah, I mean that's. I mean that's, that's fair. As soon as I saw those words, I thought I said to Lachlan, "I've never heard that before in any sport ever. A player no. misses a game because he's got a prearranged medical appointment. Look, the I mean, you know, these top athletes they get to the top of the list, mate. I mean, if I'm sitting there on a waiting list, they walk past me in the waiting room and go straight in. That's mm. how it works in New Zealand, right? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. And look, and I understand also he's he's a private guy, and so that's what I, I keep coming back to. It. If it's something to do with the family, you know, I, I just hope everything is okay, Same. and and that's fine. But you must have known about this, or New Zealand cricket must have known about this if it was in fact prearranged. So this is the problem. If it was really prearranged, tell us about it before the T20 start. If it wasn't prearranged, then everyone is just going to speculate about it. When you say it's prearranged, yeah. So just. Totally Just agree. be honest, and and there's been an issue with New Zealand cricket. The honesty has been a real problem, I think, and 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 that's um you know that that's where it sort of needs to change. A couple of quick things before we let you go. Australia versus England the other night, the lowest ever attendance at the MCG for a one day. The Big Bash crowds and the viewing figures way down last year because they got greedy and they doubled the fixtures. That was Australia versus England. I know it was a dead rubber, but there was no one at the MCG. Is that not a worry for Australian cricket? A real worry, yeah. Um, look, they're losing their audience. They're losing their public um, through certain things that have happened. They, um, you know, the crowds are diminishing. And I feel for England, for some of the England players, I saw an interview with Sam Billings the other day and he just said, um, you know, he, he basically, w- without ex- absolutely quoting him, he said, look, four or five of us are here, you know, trying to win these games. But he said, the others just just aren't interested. Um, you know, and I understand that, and he understands that. They've come off a World T20 win. They've been celebrating. They don't have any interest in this um, in this series. But there's four or five new guys that have come into the squad and into the team that are trying everything they possibly can, but they're just getting nothing out of the other six or seven. And and it's a shame. It's sad. But from an Australian point of view, that you know they have ruined that big bash. 
they're not getting the top quality of player anymore. And, um, you know, it's a tournament that, that probably was at one stage the second best and is now probably the fourth or fifth best. Finally, I'm back in Justin Langer on this, who has uh, called the players who spoke uh, anonymously behind his back to the media who went and complained to Australian cricket. He's calling them cowards. He says the media call them sources. He says they're cowards. I'm oh, Look, I think this is the same as when Danny Hay got rolled, and I won't name the players, but a couple of them went squealing to New Zealand football, saying he's a bully, and he shouted, and he told us off and things. Come on, you bloody men, mate. You know, you men, act like a man. A man, actually, if he's got mm. something going on, he would say something to the coach. You don't go running behind his back. I don't know what has happened here, but this is, I think it is cowardly. It's wimpy and it's cowardly. Well, it's the, it's the new generation, Marty, unfortunately. It's, um, you know, Justin Langer grew up through that early sort of, or oh, the late Alan Border era and then through, obviously, the Taylor and Ponting Steve and, Ward. and those times yep. when you just, or Steve War, when you just fronted up to, to guys, you said, if you had a problem, you front it up to them and you, and you talk through it. And um, you didn't always uh, get along with your teammates at times, but you had enormous respect for their ability to do their job. And and that was what it was all about. But the modern day player, you can't you can't question what he did. You can't question his shot. You can't question what he did in a game situation because it might hurt his feelings. Yeah, I know. And, um, and, and that's... You know, that's where um, a lot of these players are. A lot of these modern day players are, are at the same level now. Um, you can't say one thing, or if you say one thing about them, they forget about the 10 good things that you've said, and they only remember the one the one bad thing. They just Their feelings get hurt a little bit too easily, but it's modern society, isn't it? We just have to be so careful now about what we say about anybody or, or anything in general. And if you think about the All Blacks situation, every one of those All Blacks has come out publicly and backed Ian Foster. Yep. Right? Oh, I know a couple for a fact that think he's a, an awful coach, but they won't say ever say it publicly. Yeah. I mean, you can always call me a dickhead, mate. <laughs> Feel free. I mean, if you want. I mean, I, you know, water off, water <laughs> off a dick's back, mate. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs>